It's new from Polaroid, the impulse camera. We go where it takes you. You got to go. Hello everyone and welcome to Dematic. As you might have guessed, today we're talking about a pretty interesting camera. Specifically, the Polaroid Impulse from 1988. Now this particular camera I actually inherited from my parents. And, well, I've got some fond memories of using it in the past. The film stock we're going to be using today is a black and white Polaroid 600 film. This one's a newly manufactured one from Polaroid Originals, and it still works with vintage Polaroids. Inside you see a silver bag, and inside that silver bag is your film. Oh look, it's got a nice little message here. It says, what I want to be when I grow up. Now when it comes to loading it, it is a simple process. You pull the trigger on the left side, opening up the mouth. There's a tab so you can pull out the old used film roll. We're going to go ahead and toss that. Next, grab your brand new film roll. Be sure to check that you're inserting it correctly. Line it up in the insert plug it into its big dumb mouth. Close it up and it will spit up the top cover. Now you can't open this back up again otherwise you'll ruin the film. And you're set to go. Now that we've got our camera loaded up with film, let's talk about the actual process itself. As you might know a Polaroid has a white border on the edges with a slightly larger chin on the bottom. Inside this larger chin are actually three different packets of developing materials. As the photo is taken, the image is exposed to the frame, and as it comes out, the three bags get squished, releasing the chemicals, and they are spread by the rollers inside the camera. That is what makes a Polaroid instant. Now that we've got our camera loaded up, and we know a little bit about the process, I guess the only thing left is going out and getting some photos. Now luckily today is actually Independence Day in the United States, so I'm going to get some pictures of some grillin' and some chillin'. Join me, shall you? Alright, so now we actually have our photos ended up getting a full eight shots out of them. Some interesting results, however. For instance, yeah, this was me attempting to take a bit of a selfie. And even though I did use the top half that switches it to a shorter distance, it still didn't turn out quite as well. In fact, there's uh, a few interesting results to go through. Rather than try and show you all these through here, I'm going to actually display them on screen and I'll talk about them a little bit. So first up we have the selfie photo. 
with myself and the background. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry and definitely caught me by surprise. That flash is a lot brighter than you might think. Which then brings me to my second one. Now, I was more surprised with how this one kind of got blown out a little bit. So this one is actually a photograph of my background over here, my bookshelf. And yeah, it's quite blown out, but with the white background, it actually, it's really hard to describe how it actually turned out. It's almost as if it was painted on glass. It's a very interesting development. I did not expect that. Uh, then I have a photo of my nephew, and he is playing with some bubbles, having some great fun. Now, this one turned out pretty well for being an action shot. However, composition-wise, I had to work with what I had. Overall, I'm pleased how that one turned out. Next up, I have a photograph of the grill. So here is the grill we were using, warming up some of the charcoal. Uh, managed to catch some of the flames in there. Interesting to see the flames in black and white. Uh, yeah, really nice capture of the shadows, and I think this is probably one of the best looking photos that I was able to take. A little bit later, we were grilling up some burgers. So as soon as they were slammed on the grill, I decided to take some photos. The burgers look like ghostly hockey pucks. <laughs> uh, very, very overexposed in some spots. Uh, but overall, I think it's pretty cool that I was able to capture it. You do get a bit of the reflection there and you can still see the dust on top of the actual grill itself. Then of course I have one final one from the actual 4th of July, and it's a photo of my nephew playing in the pool. And this one's pretty interesting. This was actually the first one that I took, and it was interesting because I had to figure out exactly how to frame it, because as you might notice, the lens is right in the center. However, the viewfinder is on the left side. So if you go exactly by what you're seeing in the viewfinder, you're actually going to be shifted over a little bit from where you're actually trying to shoot. So that was a little bit interesting to work with. And the last two photos here are actually from a couple days after. <laughs> uh, just took them today actually as a storm rolled through off to the north. So I got a pretty good photo of the landscape you really can't see some of the clouds there uh, mostly that's just due to how the light was captured uh, you can see a little bit detail if you look really close uh, and then probably my favorite from the whole storm is the very last one here and this very last one got some of the power lines in the shot got a couple of the trees there and you couldn't really see the storm rolling through a lot better than the prior photo. And just like I described, if you look at the bottom, you might be able to see it. It's a little bit bright. What if I turn off the light? There we go. You can actually see the three packets at the bottom. And inside there is the developer. No. And so that developer is what develops the photos. Now, if you were looking closely, you might have noticed there's a little bit of a strange coloration on the bottom. Now, I'm not sure if that was just due to the film that I was using or if it was from the camera itself, but every one of the shots almost has, I describe it as a little bit of staining of sorts except for my selfie photo. The selfie photo actually has probably the best <laughs> looking bottom border. Yeah, definitely the shot of my bookcase is my favorite, just how the white background contrasts with the actual image itself. It's, it's really cool, but it's definitely something that you have to see in person to get. and. That's definitely part of the appeal of doing a Polaroid photo. It's a photograph that you can hold and it's instant. You get it within minutes. Uh, it should be noted that I did develop all of these with 15 minutes of time at least, and I did put them immediately in a dark enclosed bag. So all of these 
were uh, developed in the dark to hopefully bring out their best image possible. So overall, what are my thoughts? Well, I definitely would want to try a color film stock as well, just to see how that goes. Uh, because black and white, if you get your setup correctly, it does look great. The downside though, is the price. So they are still manufacturing these with the Polaroid originals. However, the black and white film stock ran me $18. Now you might be able to find it a little bit cheaper at a different location perhaps. However, at my local Meyer, it was $18. So unfortunately, I don't think I will be shooting too much with this Polaroid. It'll be saved for more special occasions, such as the 4th of July, and I'm more likely to use the color instant photographs, because uh, I definitely want to give those a try. Uh, speaking of other cameras, I do use a Fuji DL25 Plus to take some photos, and I anticipate doing a video on that in the future. So hopefully, this has been quite informative for you, and hopefully you've been entertained. And yeah, I mean, definitely, I'd suggest picking one of these up if you find it at a reasonable price, or hey, if you can get it from somebody you know, somebody in your family, yeah, definitely pick it up. Just know it will be a little bit of an investment if you do want to take some shots. But there is definitely a real tactile <laughs> experience when it comes to choosing your shot, taking that shot, and then getting an actual end product right then and there. It's as close as you can really get to doing digital photography with a physical <laughs> analog sort of photographic setup, if I'm making myself clear. So if you want to see some more uh, videos in the future, whether it's maybe the follow up to this with some color photographs or the upcoming Fuji video. Make sure you leave a comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell, and you'll get some notifications when I post something new. Thank you. No thank you. Get out. Leave. You got to go.